Daniel chapter 11 this morning, and um, we're reading about the uh, the kings of the um, Medes and Persia and Babylon. So let's see if they can get along. <laughs> probably not. They're probably gonna be like, um, no, that is our land. No. You know, you know how, how men fight over land and religion. It's the most two things that they've been fighting over many, many thousands of years. Been slaughtering each other. You know, so... Let's go ahead. Let's see if God can intervene somehow and save some lives here. Um, I have been standing beside Michael to support and strengthen him since the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede. Now that I will reveal the truth to you, three more Persian kings will reign to be succeeded by a fourth, far richer than the others. He will use his wealth to stir up everyone to fight against the kingdom of Greece. Then a mighty king will rise to power who will rule with great authority and accomplish everything he sets out to do. But at the height of his power and his kingdom will be broken apart and his kingdom into four parts and will not be ruled by kings descend by the king's descendants nor will the king hold the authority it once had for his empire will be uprooted and given to others the king of the south will increase in power but one of his own officials will become more powerful than he and will rule his kingdom with great strength wow one of his own officials, huh? That's kind of like, you know, the king had a, say, like a general or something. We call that a coup, the coup d'etat, where the general, you know, pretty much takes out, doesn't follow orders anymore. He he does his own thing now. He's kind of kind of went rogue, in a sense. Yeah, verse uh, five or six. Some years later an alliance will be for formed between the king of the north and the king of the south. The daughter of the king of, of the south will be given in marriage to the king of the north to secure the, the alliance. But she will lose her influence over him. And so will her father. She will be abandoned along with her supporters. But when one of, her, one of her relatives becomes king of the south, he will raise an army to enter the fortress of the king of the north and defeat him. When he returns to Egypt, he will carry back their idols with him, along with priceless articles of gold and silver. For some years afterward, he will leave the king of the north alone. Later, the king of the north will invade the realm of the king of the south, but will soon return to his own land. However, the sons of the king of the north will assemble a mighty army, a mighty army, that will advance like a flood and carry the battle as far as the enemy's fortress. Then in a rage, the king of the south will rally against the vast forces assembled by the king of the north and will defeat them. After the, 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 the enemy army is swept away, the king of the south will be filled with pride, will execute many thousands of his enemies, but his success will be short-lived. <laughs> oh man, it's drama, it's beef right now, it's war, man. <laughs> they're, they're, they're offing each other. They're offing each other right now. Thousands. He's going to start offing thousands of his own enemies. I don't want to. I don't want to imagine what that's going to look like. A few a few years later, the king of the north will return with a fully equipped army, far greater than before. At that time, there will be a general uprising against the king of the south. Did I just say that earlier? Wow! Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit's with me. That's why I got insights like that. <laughs> That's why the devil hates that because I have the Holy Spirit within me. And I actually, I actually uh, in communication with the Most High God, and He don't like that. 
Well, it's awesome for you guys because um, what God portrays to me, I can give you the message. And the devil will try to stop us, as he always tries to stop us some way. Whether with, you know, hiccups or anything, trying to stop us. But, you know, we're going to keep on prevailing. Verse 15. Then the king of the north will cut, come and lay siege to a fortified city and capture it. The best troops of the south will not be able to stand in the face of the onslaught. Wow. The king of the north will march onward un unopposed. None will be able to stop him. He will pause in the glorious land of Israel and intent on destroying it. What? Who is this king? He will make he will make plans to come with the might of his entire army and form an alliance with the king of the south. Will give he will give him a daughter in marriage to order to overthrow the kingdom from within. But his plan will fail. After this he will turn his attention to the coastland and conquer many cities. But a commander from another land will push an end to his his insolence. Oh, yeah. And cause him to re retreat in shame. He will take refuge in his own fortresses, but he will but will stumble and fall and be seen no more. His successor will send out a tax collector to maintain the royal splendor, but after a very brief reign he will die, though not from anger or in battle. So. Uh, you know, that's that's what he gets to try to mess with Israel. We don't know who the, who this king is. It doesn't say in the Bible here. I'm trying to find out who is this king trying to plot on Israel. You know, some actually take these verses as a prophecy of the Antichrist trying to destroy Israel. Um, the Antichrist, the one that's against Christ, our Lord and Savior, he's going to try to. Uh, you know, send a, a war, a big war, that Israel, as he is trying right now through Iran and Russia, okay, these are all Bible prophecies here, um, the United States is in the, in, in the, the reason why they can't do that, for the reason why they can't go in there and invade Israel, as, as Iran wants to, okay, Iran is actually modern day Persia, if you think about it. Okay? Persia right now is Iran in the Bible. Twenty first century Persia. That's who Iran is. Okay? That's their that's their connection in the Bible. Let me go further? <laughs> let's see let's see where this Bible Bible rabbit's trail goes to here. Um verse 19 or 20 actually oh no 21 the next the next to come to power will be a, a despicable man and he was not in line for a royal succession he will slip in when least expected it and take over the kingdom by flattery and intrigue before him greater armies will be swept away including a covenant prince with the deceitful with deceitful promises he will make various alliances and he will become strong despite having only a handful of followers. Wow. Without warning, he will enter the richest areas of the land. Then he will distribute among his followers the plunder and the wealth of the rich. Sometimes something his predecessors have never done. He will plot the overthrow of strongholds, but this will last for only a short while. Then he will stir up his courage and raise a great army against the king of the south. The king of the south will go to battle with a mighty army, but, but to no avail. But there will be a there will be plots against him. His own household will cause his downfall. His army will be swept away, and many will be killed. 
seeking nothing but each other's harm. These kings will plot against each other at the conference table, attempting, attempting to deceive each other. But it will make no difference, for the end will come at the appointed time. Like I said in the beginning of this session, um, man has been known for fighting over two things, land and religion. And the carnage doesn't stop in, in the 21st century. It still goes on today. Um, and you have you have uh, God trying to save everybody. You know, in the midst of this, Yeshua, Christ Jesus, um, is trying to everybody just put down your weapons and pick up a Bible. Okay, and uh, it's, it's it's time to come to sense come to come to conclusion that he is God, the only God and the king and uh there's no there shouldn't be any 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 more reason to hurt another man. Okay. So these men have failed to do that, obviously, so that's why they're plotting on one another. They rather harm one another than pick up God's word and listen to his his prophets in those days. You know, they're not seeking counsel from God. They're seeking their own counsel. What happens when you seek your own counsel? You end up destroying everybody around you and yourself. That's the end result. Seeking your own counsel. So, those are your choices. Or you can seek the counsel of the devil, which will probably give you plunder and riches for a while and then after that it just ends you know those are your choices for me I'd rather seek God's counsel and His Holy Spirit which lasts forever and peaceful so we can be at peace with other men and women that's the wise counsel that's the Holy Spirit that's Yeshua that's the God of Israel which is the God of the whole universe as well. Okay. That's what we believe here on this side. Verse 28. The king of the north will then return home with great riches. On the way he will set himself against the people of the holy covenant. Doing much damage before continuing his journey. Then, as, then at the appointed time. He will once again evade the south. But this time the result will be different. For warships from western coastlands will scare him off, and he will withdraw and return home. But he will vent his anger against the people of the Holy Covenant, and reward those who forsake the covenant. <laughs> hey, that's something. That's something that still happens today, man. You know, you still got you still got tyrants. You still got uh, tyrannical uh, dictators. You know. Um, that are actually take it out of their own people. You know, you don't have to look that far. I mean, <laughs> we'll talk about that's another subject for later. Um, it's like they can't, they can't, they can't fight another another kingdom. They have to take it out of their own. You know what I'm saying? So what happens? You know, I'll give you an example. In Africa, there are a lot of there are a lot of warlords over there. Okay, they're fighting each other. There, there's genocide going on in Africa right now. Darfur, uh, you know, Rwanda, uh, you know, and it's because all these warlords and kings and, and dictators, you know, they, 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 they rather, they rather slaughter, slaughter their own than, than, uh, you know, try to, you know, do this and, and that. They rather just, it's easier just to slaughter your own and, and take their land, you know, that's what they're doing right now. And then the Muslims came in there out of nowhere, helping these warlords against the Christians over there. And the Christians, they don't really have nothing to defend themselves. There's no government, there's no army, so they get slaughtered. And we just read the other day in, in Nigeria, another couple hundred Christians were having church. They all got slaughtered by having church. The, 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 the warlords marching their little, little goons. You know, line every Christian up, shot them, each one of them by one. Uh, they all got headshots. Okay? Even women and children. 
You know, you want to go ahead and put this under the rug, go for it, not me. <laughs> you know, and, and, and like, we're, we're, this, this is the world we live in, man. This, everybody rather be asleep here. You know, and no, uh, no, no, they don't want to look at these things or talk about these things. You know, but yeah, it's happening. In the name, in the name of, <clears throat> in the name of our God in, he in heaven, we're getting slaughtered by the thousands. Okay, and no one's gonna say anything about it. I guess we're. I guess the Lord was right. We are. We are sh to be sheep to be slaughtered. I guess we are to be slaughtered for His sake. Let 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 us have a bigger house in the next life than a mansion. Otherwise, for the for the martyrs who 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 rather you know take a bullet for Him than to forsake Him. Okay, as verse thirty says, you know. He said, "If you if you forsake the covenant, you'll live. That means if you deny Christ, you'll live on this earth. If you, if you don't deny, that's what they did. They went to in Nigeria. They went to every person in, in church and asked them, hey, if you if you if you if you, if you say you know Jesus Christ, we're gonna blow your brains out right there, just like your pastor. We're starting with your pastor here. Your pastor's gonna get one in the head first, and then everybody in, in line." Okay, watch your pastor get 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 shot in the head, and then um, if you you want to end up like your pastor, go for it. But you can live. You can go ahead and deny Christ. We'll let you live. You you can walk out of this church. Okay, all all you gotta do is burn all your Bibles and burn all your crosses, you know, and deny Christ. We'll let you walk out here. But if you don't, we're gonna put a bolt in your head. I'm gonna have my men put a bolt in your head. They're ready to put a bolt in your head at my call, at my command. That, that's your choice, okay? Not many, many choices here. <laughs> so guess what these Nigerian Christians chose to do? As I, as I opened up the Facebook page, I saw the slaughter of men and women. I couldn't watch; it was gruesome. Blood everywhere in this church, man. Somewhere in Africa and Nigeria, they all, they all took a bullet for the Lord. They all, they all rather, they all rather die than deny. Okay, with their pastor. Do you think we have that here in the American church? You think the American church can be like the Nigerian church? Uh, I don't think so. I think we're weak compared to them. I think we're really weak, man. Okay, <laughs> that's the Nigerian church for you. That's what they rather they rather take a bullet like their pastor than than, than but from these coldless, heartless men. Who are into killing women and children? Okay, these soldiers, these warlords, these Muslims. You know, they rather, they rather, they rather take a bullet from them than deny the word of Christ. You, if you ask the average churchgoer in America, I think they would rather deny Christ the way they live their lives. But that's, that's another subject for later. Okay, I don't want to stay on a rabbit trail too long. Let's get, let's get back to the verses here. Um, his army will take over the temple fortress, pollute the sanctuary, put a stop to the daily sacrifices, and set up the sacrilegious object that causes des des desecration. He will flatter and win over those who have violated the covenant. But the people who know, who know their God will be strong and will, will, will resist him. Wise leaders will give instruction to many. But these teachers will die by the fire and sword, and they will be they will be jailed and robbed. <clears throat> During these persecutions, little help will arrive, and many who join them will not be sincere. Some of the wise will fall victim to persecution in this way. They will be refined and cleansed and made pure until the time of the end. For the appointed time is still to come. The king will do as he pleases, exalting himself and claiming to be greater than every god. Even blaspheming the god of gods, he will succeed. But not, not only the time of the wrath is completed, for what has been determined will surely take place. He will have no suspect for the gods of his ancestors. Or the or the for the God loved by women, or for any other God, for he will boast that he is greater than them all. 
Instead of thee, instead of this, he will worship the God of fortresses, a God his ancestors never knew, and lavish on him gold, silver, precious stones, and expensive gifts. So, that's the thing about the devil. When, when you worship the devil or Satan, he gives you lavish things. Okay, and then people think that's God. <laughs> you know, just because you have all these riches, you know, on pl plunder, gold, and diamonds, you know, precious stones, and people actually, it's kind of like, you know, Pharaoh, he had, he had all these, these uh, pyramids, you know, and people rather worship that than Pharaoh instead of the God of Israel or Moses, who's trying to bring Egypt, the God of Moses, or the God, the God of Moses, the God of Israel. Moses is trying to bring the God of Israel to Egypt, and and Pharaoh, you know, on the other hand, had his lavish pyramids that he had uh, Egyptian slaves built. He had his own. Or who are the Hebrew slaves? I I think they're actually Hebrew slaves. Some of them were. Um, but they were all, you know, they're all slaves building his pyramids for Pharaoh. Okay. That's what happens when uh, you got overtaken by another king. They actually, either they, they execute you on the spot or they take you as a slave working in a, a um, concentration camp or something like that. Kind of like the Nazis did to the Jews, you know. They they took them in, you know, the slaves, you know, they they worked to death. They didn't really they didn't really take care of the Jews. They just had them in camps. Evil evil Nazis, man. They 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 exterminated the Jews slowly by working them to death in these concentration camps. Okay, you saw that in in uh, Russia as well with Stalin. Stalin killed twenty million of his own people. Even even uh, Chairman Mao, who killed 90 million of his own people. Okay? These are some evil men we're talking about here. Evil men of history. Um, let's go ahead and move on. I don't want to stand around this show too long here. Verse 39, right? Yeah. Claiming this, foreign's God help. He will attack the strongest fortresses. He will honor those who submit to him, appointing them to the positions of authority, and dividing the land among them as a reward. Then at the time of the end, the king of the south will attack the king of the north. The king of the north will storm out with chariots, charioteers, and a vast navy. He will invade various lands, and sweep through them like a flood. Now, where we messed up in American America, American schools is when we stopped teaching the Bible in our schools. We took our we took our scriptures out in 1960 something, due to the Supreme Court rule that we are not going to allow prayer and Bible in, in our schools anymore. Then, when that happened, America became war zones in its own sense. Our schools became war zones, man. The lack of love was gone. It was gone already. Only if we would have kept prayer, prayer and, and the scriptures in our schools, we'd probably have been better off as a nation. Now we, we, we slaughter babies left and right by the millions and not blinking eye. Okay? This is happening in a so-called democracy. A so-called freedom country of of uh, free information. Yeah, okay, save me the hogwash. We barely have freedom as it is, man. We might have freedom today, but it's slowly being taken away, little by little. The Constitution, the right to 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 bear arms, the right to 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 uh, meet up together, to assemble. Okay. It was all part of the constitutions of the United States of America. They're, sl they're slowly taking 
the Constitution, shredding them one by one. We we don't we don't stand up for our rights. That's why we're you're gonna lose them eventually. Okay. <laughs> the the uh, there's somebody that that is in power that doesn't have the best entrance for me and you, obviously. We'll talk about that later. Let's go ahead and stick with the book of Daniel here. Um, verse 41. He will enter the glorious land of Israel, and many nations will fall. But Moab, Edom, and the best part of Ammon will escape. He will conquer many countries, and Egypt, and even Egypt, will not escape. He will gain control over the gold, silver, and treasures of Egypt. And the Libyans and Ethiopians will be his servants. Wow. Libyans? Libya's in the Bible? I didn't know that. Interesting. That means Libya was Africa back in those days. Not the Middle East today. Because Egypt might have been part of Africa as well. We know Ethiopia is. Ethiopia is still out part of Africa today. Ethiopia um, is the one of the first uh, um, Christian churches came out of Ethiopia. Ethiopia, Coptic Christian church, besides the Roman Catholic Church, only two churches came out of those regions. So you have the Roman Catholic Church coming out of Europe for for the white people, and then you have the Ethiopian Coptic, and then and then um, uh, Egyptian Coptic come out for the brown and black okay people. So there you go. Verse forty four. Then the news from the east and the north will alarm him, and he will set out a great anger to destroy and and obliterate uh, many. He will stop between the glorious holy mountain and the sea and will pitch his royal tents. But while he is there, this time will, his time will suddenly run out and no one will help him. And that's it for the verses of chapter 11, Daniel. We got one more chapter and then that will be it. We can move on to the next book of the Bible. Um, before I conclude here, let's see if I miss anything. Also, Holy Spirit, is there anything you want me to say to the people? Looks like co I covered it all. So, I hit all my targets today. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm your host, so she for this, you know, when I say targets, I'm talking about demons. How do you how do you how do you hit a demon with the Bible, the Word of God? <laughs> those are your targets. <laughs> Demons and devils alike. Those are our targets. We spray them down with the sixty six clips of the Word of God. And that's how you do it. <laughs> and um, um, just to let you know that uh, you know this this. Well, after I'm done reading the whole Bible, we're going to start doing Christian books. We're going to start reading the Christian authors. Okay? And then we'll go from there. But we got a long way before we've done all the books of the Bible. So it's going to probably be another year, year and a half, from we get into the Christian authors.